It's time for a wealth tax in America. The opinion that has become the rallying cry for the left, their war against the rich, and how they will ultimately save society and all of us who live in it. It's easy to understand why it's appealing. Let's blame people that aren't us for all of our problems and then say that we will then solve every other problem in society. If only we had the money. And here's a group of people you don't know, don't like, and will never meet who have all of the money. But will it work? Well, the very simple answer is no, but the reasons why are very complicated, so let's get into them. Best to first understand why people on the left want to do this. They call it a fair tax. They think the rich should pay the most, the poor should pay the least. It's odd that they would call this fair because it's people not paying the same amount, but sure. It's not hypocritical at all because it's their opinion. By the fact that I'm calling this left-wing, it shouldn't be overly difficult to come to the conclusion this is based on the idea of wealth redistribution. I would say that we have two major ways of taxing wealth currently in capital gains and then inheritance tax, but they're both lower than income taxes, especially in the UK. Not in the US, though. But explaining both of those to people that don't want to listen is pointless. The first reason why it fails is actually very simple, basic human nature. Humans are inherently selfish. They don't actually want to pay 60%, the highest rate of tax anyone play, pays in the UK, or the eagerly floated 97% tax by America's one and only AOC. The reasoning basically goes, I don't want to pay this tax. No reasonable person would want to pay this tax, so why should I? It also comes down to the idea that no one actually trusts the government to do anything useful. If you don't actually believe that the government's going to do the right thing, why would you give them money in order to do it? The other side to this is how much people actually pay. The top 1% in the UK pays 29.2% of government revenue. The next 10% pay 31.6%, the next 40% pay 29.9%, and the bottom 5% only pay 9.3%. People that earn less than £32,000 a year have no other forms of income and have no savings pay virtually no part of the UK's overall budget. That didn't sound important, but what would you do if you were in the top 1%, top 9%, top 10%, top 50%, and the government all of a sudden doubled, tripled, how much tax that you were meant to pay? Now, why is the likelihood that you would remain within the United Kingdom, seeing as people are already leaving now and our taxes are at 45%? I imagine when we look at Lewis Hamilton, his reasoning for living in Monaco is because it is nice and convenient to his workplace in Milton Keynes. So with the 1% already leaving and the Labour Party planning on raising taxes, or at least some elements in the Labour Party wanting to raise taxes or start taxing their wealth, more of them are going to start leaving. And if they all leave, the government revenue will be reduced by 29.2%. How exactly are we meant to account for 30% loss in government revenue? Well, that's simple, isn't it? We'll just raise taxes on the top 10%. Some of them are still evil millionaires. And, let me guess, the same things won't repeat themselves. Oh wait, they will. The top 9% are still relatively well off and will still have the opportunity to leave. And now we've lost 60.8% of our government revenue. And then it will be the next 40% of the country that haven't left already seeing the writing on the wall. But that 40% only accounts for 29.9% of government revenue. They'd have to almost triple their taxes. And of course, this is the lower middle class to upper working class. They're mostly professionals, doctors, engineers, middle management, higher end builders, specialist electricians. Like most of those people might be assholes, but what the fuck are we meant to do when there's no NHS, no education, no infrastructure, no one to build anything, and no one to sell it to? So, if the best outcome is the amount of money the government receives from higher taxes is that nothing changes with government revenue, as the number of people that pay the higher taxes is outstripped by the number of people that leave, that being the best outcome, the worst is that the number of people that continue to pay the taxes falls to zero. It seems that this is a policy non-starter. So why does everyone keep sort of bringing it up? That's also really easy to find out. It's because this is easy. As I said earlier, nobody really likes the 1%, the top 9%. 
hell lots of people don't like people who are in the top 50 percent when the justification for the policy is inequity surely everyone that earns more than 50 percent should have to pay for the people that earn less equality is 32,000 pounds a year and no savings the average brit does not have a house is that the uncomfortable truth at the heart of this policy that equality in this country is the demanded outcome from tax that we all live like the average person whilst we are simultaneously being told that the average person doesn't have a life we should want and this is entirely reliant on the idea that that's even achievable that the government could do it the government doesn't have a good track record of doing anything properly so what is the likelihood that if they made the lives of every british national equal they made them the middle 50 percent that wouldn't be worse than it current what it currently is Remember, if we lose just the top 10%, we lose 60.8% of government revenue. And they're gone. It's not like they've been taxed out of existence. They've simply left. They're still existing on their tax haven in Monaco or in Crete. Hell, they're taxed better in France. They're probably taxed better in Sweden, a country so many people in America repeatedly and wrongly called socialist. Their media has to go out every single time it's brought up and remind Americans that they are. And they even do it in English so the Americans can understand. The real problem is that the UK spends too much money. Government services are bloated and broken, as is the civil service. Pensions don't work and have been proven not to work repeatedly for the last 40 years. The NHS is literally more administration than it is healthcare. It's a national administration service that occasionally treats people poorly. And then we have the welfare state, which so routinely leaves people poorer than when they started and traps them in that poverty. Where I agree with this premise is the idea that our economy is broken, where I disagree is with the people that broke it. Our economy is built on Keynesian economics and it's proven time and time again not to work. But here we are repeating the same mistakes and expecting the results to change. But this has been a Politic Chalkboard video. If you've enjoyed, consider giving it a like, maybe even subscribe. Do come back for more.